Welcome back to another episode of Cobra Kai Companion, and I am Peter, and you guys, another special interview from the Karate Kid musical world. Uh, joining us, who plays uh, Johnny Lawrence, young Johnny Lawrence, is Jake Bentley Young. How you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, you are the first one that um, I, I'm getting to speak with after, let me double check that. I'm pretty sure, yes, you are the first first one after the actual premiere on june 1st that i've spoken oh, with so yeah because i i i feel there might have been one or two after the preview right yeah i i think i think alan and jetta was probably after you know a preview yeah. or two so you're the first one after the actual premiere so how, how's it feel man like you know all the previews and all the rehearsals and the actual opening night dude it's been such a long time coming we started working on the show i mean it's been in development for years but but i joined the project way last year and it's just gone over gone, undergone so many changes and then you know we landed in st louis um and uh put it up and again changes every day um so many so many different voices and then previews obviously you talk to them in the midst of previews um but i'm telling you man like opening night here in st louis was like just flooded with fans and people who know the show people who know the content I, I can't even tell you like the energy is like so electric I'm still like buzzing off of that like however many days later and we've been doing it every day we're doing the show every day it's just a blast I can't even believe I'm doing it now um I I know it's it's pretty different but what was the feeling um your feelings from the first pre preview night to opening night uh what were the, some of the big differences um for you guys you know they would they would like mix mix up some of the the songs a little bit a lot of technical elements when you're working with so many like broadway professionals um you got to trust they know uh, a big picture musical when they see one you know so it was a lot of little words here and there um so I wouldn't say like monumental changes, but we're definitely always on our toes. It can even be like little words here and there. Um, but you'd be surprised, man, in, in theater, uh, the little little things can can uh, make an audience understand the story. And of course you got a lot of musical theater people, you got a lot of Cobra Kai people, you got a lot of Karate Kid people, uh, and you wanna bring them all into the tent. Um, so, so little changes like that make a huge difference. But then obviously opening night comes around June 1st and um, it feels like everything just, clicks um yeah it's crazy yeah i'm not part of this world so i'm like and, you know i just get really excited to hear you guys talk about it and share share your experiences and we'll definitely get more of that before we learn uh, some more about you so sure. um born born and raised in california yeah born and raised in sacramento um, in sacramento okay because i know your brother is also uh kind of into the scene and yeah. I've seen uh, clips of you playing the drums and is it bass. I mean, I guess you play the, the different types of gu guitar, but talk about, uh, you know, you as a kid and when did you decide you wanted to play instruments? Man, it's, it's wild. My, my dad's an artist. He's a, he's a radio host. He's in a band. Um, and he was kind of my super artistic influence guy. Like you said, my brother's in the world as well. Um, so just kind of growing up around him, I wasn't even super trained i was just kind of like a goofball artist dude um and i had great parents who allowed me to just play around of course there was instruments all over my house growing up and of course i'm growing up in the musical theater world as well so that was always kind of an interest writing in that way um and yeah i mean i couldn't even tell you an exact age when i picked it up it's just kind of always been me my dad and my brother dabbling around the house and um and that's kind of in many ways how i made the transition into professional theater as well but um yeah i mean anywhere i go i have to bring my guitar and or my piano that's just kind of you know the through line of of my my peace of mind um but yeah yeah are you that guy where people are like where's jake and you're like sitting in the corner just strumming <laughs> some <laughs> some strings in college i was probably that <laughs> douchebag guy no not really but um yeah yeah i, I think so uh i yeah I don't know. I don't know. My, my dad is, like I said, is such a performative uh, guy. I think that's probably where if I have any shred of charisma um, or, or, or talent, I definitely get it from, from my dad. Um, who's always like encouraged me to just, you know, be an artistic dude. Um, and it's, it's carried on into where we are now. 
You know, I never really thought about this, but my dad actually, um, he himself was a musician, not professionally, but there was a local Laotian band here and they would play at like the New Year parties and, and weddings. But he um, plays the guitar and he sings. He has a great voice. But for whatever reason, just kind of, now I'm thinking about it, hearing your story that he never really like, hey, you know, let's, let me show you how to play the, the guitar. I think yeah. he was just like, you know, here's a bike, son. Go go explore the world, you know. So that's what I was doing. So I'm kind of like now I'm a little a little salty. <laughs> you know, maybe I could have been in the Karate Kid musical with you guys, you know, like yeah. dancing, be, you know, yeah. behind behind the cast. But yeah, yeah it, it's wild, you know, it, but, but funny enough, I would end up, you know, podcasting you know here going on eight years so um i i do love what i do but um i've always enjoyed music you know uh, I've, I've written songs you know i i rapped back in the days so you know so it was always kind of there but it's nothing that i really like pursued yeah you know it was just it was for funds for funsies uh but um so aside from like playing the the, the guitar and stuff like that you, you know obviously your your dad seems to be a pretty big inspiration. Was there any other music artist growing up that that you just really enjoyed or was really inspired by? It's a great question. I mean, me and my dad bonded over classic rock, which I think like, and I'm again, I could talk days and days about how how many parallels we have I've had in, had in my life that leads me to like doing this role, doing this job at this show. Kind of wild. Um, uh, my dad's like the nice Johnny Lawrence of the '80s. He's he's like a badass. Um, uh yeah and then coupled with that believe it or not you know growing up as a young dude in the musical theater world there were voices like drew gasparini who wrote the music um for this wonderful show who actually was influencing me in my uh like teen years too like there you got the you got the rock side and like you know the musician stuff and in the theater world it, that's what i'm saying it's like very full circle there were these these theater elements that I like grew up loving. And that's kind of like how I wanted to write as well and like participate um, as an actor or otherwise. And then here, like I said, like here we are, those worlds kind of blend together. Um, yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to think of anyone else. I mean, I don't know, me and my dad were big like John Mayer people. I know that doesn't fit in, in any of those worlds really, but um, yeah, and I just had so many friends along the way who will dabble, will do little, uh, especially during the pandemic, we would do little coffee shop shows and stuff, just write a bunch of songs and, and do a little outdoor concert. So yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a through line for sure. Now, what about theater? Uh, you mentioned, you know, the, the musical uh, aspect is an uh, inspiration from your dad. Now, was that just something you decided you wanted to do in school at some point or uh, w what drove you to trying out the theater? Yeah, I think um, my dad had started college as a drama major and had just been, it had just been a thing in our family. My older sister did it as well. So I was probably eight or nine when I, you know, it was just an extracurricular thing. Um, and I, to believe it or not, it's just, it's just been a thing I've done all the time. I, I, I was thinking about this the other day because obviously doing this whole thing makes it feel very full circle. It's very surreal. And I was like, when did I decide to, to, to do this? I don't really remember when it was just something I've always been doing you know I did I played a lot of sports growing up um, and this has just kind of been the thing I wanted to tackle and, and understand and be the best I could at um, but my brother is an actor as well um, so it's just it's just kind of always been a, a through line of our artistic family I guess and yeah landed me just, here, yeah. it just yeah. ran in your uh, in, in your veins you know really yeah, just I, yeah so yeah I think it probably would have resisted that idea for a while when you're surrounded by so many people so many sick dancers in this show so many sick singers it's easy to be like what am i what am i doing here you know but um yeah it's until recently i'm like oh this is just this is yeah i think it's just in my veins and i'm, and I'm so thrilled i gotta do it every day okay so growing up in california you're from sacramento what take what takes you to um uh to texas state uh, I, I was born in corpus christi you know and i i lived in Southern Texas for a few years before moving up to Portland, Oregon and been here basically the rest of my life. But yeah, wh wh why Texas State? It's a great question. I get that all the time because I mean, my parents were like, why, why are you going to, what, what's going on in Texas? You know, as an 18 year old kid, um, you know, when I was in, at the end of high school, I was looking into like programs that I, you know, in the direction I wanted to go, I studied musical theater, obviously. And, um, and this, this one Texas State University, the, the teacher there, 
Caitlin Hopkins stood out to me in such a big way. Um, it was just a very innovative program, a small program um, in a beautiful area. San Marcos is the town. Um, and it just, I, it just felt very serendipitous. I can't really describe it. Um, I, I met the teacher there. I got into the program. It's a small program. Um, and it just seemed like, you know, if I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do or what my place in, in the theater world was, that was the place where I was going to figure it out. And, um, and it was astounding how wonderful uh, Texas State was for me, especially growing up and trying to figure out my place uh, in the world professionally and otherwise. Um, it's, yeah, it's a little bizarre, Texas, I know, but, but um, it's just a killer program over there. And, uh, and yeah, and that's kind of, it was a California and then Texas and then eventually New York's where I live now. Okay, and so Texas State, um, how did it prepare you or what tools did it give uh, to you to kind of go out there and tackle the world in theater? Yeah, well, I took a ton of, of dance. There's a, there's a lot of dance there and I had two left feet going to college. <laughs> I was like, what am I, you know, I, I, could, I, could, I could act, I could do, you know, I could do some of this stuff, but um, there, there was so much curriculum based in that world and of course, at the time, I'm like, why am I wasting my time learning all this? This isn't my niche, you know? Um, uh, and of course, it took a lot of voice. I met a lot of important friends um, that, that have like carried me to where I am now. Uh, but I'd say the biggest thing is like, I just took a lot of styles of dance and stuff that influenced me and, and kind of led to doing this show. Um, I did eventually like work as a, as a dancer in college, surprisingly. I just kept grinding at it just one thing I really eventually wanted to get a lot better at. And then here we are in the Karate Kid where we're doing a lot of, of dance. I mean, if I had seen what I'm, what I'm doing in this show uh, when I was 18 as a freshman in college, I would have never, never believed it. It's crazy. But um, I'd say that's the biggest thing. And it's, I, it, in, you know, in my, in my short years, few years out of college, that's helped me out so much to have a little bit of a movement background um, yeah, that's the biggest thing. And they, they taught me well over there and it felt, it felt like boot camp for sure. <laughs> yeah. I know what that's like. Oh, well, actual boot camp, but, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, your, your friends, um, uh, helped you I'm kind of misremembering the, the words, but you mentioned the friends at Texas state, you have a friend that also played a younger version of a character in, in a film. And I'm talking about on a week, uh, yeah. could oh, you, my talk about seeing her in senior year in that relationship oh i'm so glad you brought that up um yeah anna puig anna puig is an incredible actor and one of my best friends um and we started out in college together we met you know when we were 18 she was one of those few people in my class and we immediately um hit it off and we we did like we, we for whatever reason like all of our friends joke joked in college we would do all these little plays together at texas state we would do you know, a little lab show. You were always working on something, something crazy. Um, and for whatever reason, me and Anna were always like paired together. And then, in, you know, we would be in sophomore acting or, or junior acting. And they'd be like, does anyone work together too much? And we were like, me and Anna work together too much. And they're like, great, we won't pair you together. And of course they forget and pair us together anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I can't say enough good things about her. She is a hard, hard worker. Um, an incredible actor and just like a, a chill person. And we actually live across the street from each other in New York, coincidentally. Um, and yeah, and so it's no surprise to me when she when she told me she was gonna be in a Netflix movie and, and she's got so many things coming down the pipeline. Um, and, and when I look at what she's doing and my other classmates, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, like, I'm, I'm making something out of my, you know, if, I'm, if this is the company I'm keeping, um, then I think it's, I think I'm doing okay. But yeah, she's she's incredible. And she's in senior year on Netflix and she's hilarious. Um, yeah, and she's great. She, she, and she was one of those people who, you know, kept me going throughout college with the in the peaks and the valleys. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like you guys were pretty tight. You know, like I, I try to do my research. I try to read up on people, oh, try, yeah. try to watch things. But but um, I, I watched senior year probably like the very first week it came out. And, you know, like, uh, again, as a podcaster and even aside from companion here, like I, 
I interview people for other things as well. And so like anything I watch, there's always people that kind of like stick out to me. And I'm just like, I bet you they have an interesting story. And I, I you know, I, I, she was one that I looked up, but you know, I never reached out to her or anything like that. But then, you know, fast forward to just like the other night I go, no way they're friends, you know, her, uh, Anna and Jay, that's, that's crazy. And awesome. we were at her friend's house last night. They were, they were stro- uh, scrolling through Netflix. I go, Hey, um, you guys watch that that senior year? I, I hear that's it's supposed to be pretty funny. Let's watch that. And just, just to kind of like see, I was like, okay, you know, trying to refresh my memory how she was and stuff. I go, that that's that's her. It, it, it's wild. Like I, I didn't even make that connection initially, but there, there she was. Yeah, Your buddy. She's in that. You you've seen the movie. She's in. You know, she plays the young the young bad guy, um, and and uh, that's exactly how she is as like as a person. Not not um, you know that mean, but but. Like she, that's how she is as an actor. She's like, I guarantee you, she created that sort of like timbre of that character. Um, yeah, I don't know. And it's so rewarding to see the people you you've come up with do such big things that make so much sense. Um, yeah, and it's crazy. And I love that. I love that. You see, it's such a small world, right? Like now, one of my best friends is doing the show. It's 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 very cool. I like I said, I pinch myself every day. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really awesome. I mean, yeah, you know, you. Um... Yeah, the company you keep, you know, it, it 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 says something, and sounds like that school is pretty good, you know, to produce people who are or who are doing things, you know, shortly after graduation. Yeah. Um, okay, so they, actually, New York. You know, you mentioned you guys live in New York. Um, now, after graduation, did you decide? Well, that's where if if um, there's anything, the theater scene is in New York. Is that what took you there initially? Yeah, absolutely. It was. I graduated in 2020, March 2020, no, May 2020, but March 2020 came along and kind of, you know, upended yeah. a lot of our, our situations. So I traveled around for a bit and then, you know, there was a lot of time off. Um, and then maybe a year and a half later, I, I kind of mustered up the, the strength to like, you know, when we all walked out of our front doors for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I did, uh, I did, I worked in Indiana for the summer. I did some jobs there. And then finally moved to New York. Um, and it feels very, you know, if you're not from New York city, it can be super overwhelming. Um, but you know, the weeks leading up to it, I, I sent my name out to a few places, um, just tried to catch a, a wide net, make some connections. And then a few days after I moved there, I was very, very lucky that I had my last callback for this developmental workshop for this show. Um, so like three days after I'm, I moved there, I auditioned for this job. Um, and then, Two days later, they like told me I got the job too. So, so I feel very lucky that that uh, I had a good, st- like I had something to look forward to immediately um, when I moved here or, or there. So you auditioned for the Johnny uh, character or just for the production? For the Johnny character, yeah, I did. I did a f- I, like four or five rounds total, maybe four, um, leading up to it on Zoom. Uh, um sending in tapes and that sort of thing and then the final one was in person things were still a little we were still being covid conscious at the time um sure. so one in person uh but yeah just kept working out in my favor and i got to do it for for all the the folks there okay and yeah and then landed the part it was pretty great yeah so let's talk about that process because we heard that there was like thousands of people and so um, I I didn't even get a chance to ask like you know Keone and Mari about like well what about the dancers how did you guys you know narrow down all all the all of the dancers, but um, uh, do you know I mean I know that you were like submitting tapes and stuff like that were there a lot of other people trying to uh, uh, audition for that Johnny um role, you know I don't know about the Johnny one in particular but I do know everyone in the you know the community is pretty tight knit. Um, or the, the industry specific. And I knew so many people who were doing this dance combo, you know, finding a space. Everyone wanted to be in the Karate Kid musical um, and the, the, the workshop at least. Um, and I don't know how many, I, I have a lot of dancer friends, I'm not sure how many people were in the Johnny pipeline, but um, when I, at least when I saw it, I was like, oh, I know I can do this. I know this, this part. And it's, it's rare that you feel so, oh, I think I could like, you know, confident. Um, so that kind of carried me through the process. I think I had a, had an extra <laughs> burst of confidence. I, th- I thought I could do it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very, very popular when, you know, 
all my industry buddies, everyone wanted to be in the Karate Kid because it's it was so like, why is it a musical? That was our question at the time. What's this going to be? But that's what's exciting about it, you know? Yeah. And I, I guess I didn't really get into this, but um, what was your history with the Karate Kid? I mean, obviously, it, it sounds like you, you know, were very familiar with it um, when you, you know, started going to the workshop. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I was as uh, as obsessed as other people was. I, I'd, I'd seen the movie once or twice, you know, and it had been a couple of years. But I knew the part, I knew the show vaguely. And of course, after I got the job, I've, I've just like, you know, watched the movie a billion times, you know, scanned the series a million times because there's so much good stuff in it. Um, but yeah, I mean... I had and I had I had worked on some like villainous parts in, in my summers or in, in college. Um, and it was just it's just a whole lot of fun, honestly, to do that sort of work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I when I saw the I, I didn't have any any agent or anything at the time. So I just saw this on a on a newspaper casting announcement um, wow. and knew one person who knew someone else. So reached out. That was just kind of what I was doing for a while, just, just reaching out everywhere I could. Um, and yeah, I just worked in the material and, and landed where I am now. So you, you land the part of Johnny and then you go to St. Louis. What then? Uh, I mean, we, we had, we had worked on it for a month, um, in the city. Uh, and that was a big time for, you know, all the producers, producers to come in, make a lot of changes, see the whole thing on a macro scale. Um, and, and produce it like, you know, to make it make sense for a wide audience. Um, and then when we get here, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's pretty mind blowing when you're, when you step into the space um, and you have, you know, Derek McLean, who's a Tony award winner on the set design. We have so many like um, Kate Baldwin's on the project. She's a, a two-time Tony nominee and someone Lucille. Under- Lucille. Lucille. Yep. yep. Um, and Alan H. Green plays Chris. He's a Broadway legend. Um, and now just like one of my buddies, uh, so you got, you got all these people. It's so crazy. Like, and, and it's in St. Louis and this beautiful new performing arts center. You got all this bonsai tree stuff. You got them, you got the cars, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but, um, right. yeah, it, it takes a, it took a day to just be like, all right, I got to chill out. Like I just got to live in this world. And then when you're on stage, man, it feels like you're in the Miyagi verse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, Robert Mark came in, you know, mentioned the yellow car, so you guys are bringing like cars onto the stage? Yes, I think I think I can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's also we have a wonderful um, projection designer as well. So it kind mm. of like, uh, uh, you know, it flows. Um, uh, it's it's very theatrical. Um, but yeah, there's 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 real cars. There's the whole the whole all, a lot of the iconic moments. Um, they they do. The producers have done a wonderful job with. Okay. So you mentioned you have two left feet, right? <laughs> I did. So, yeah, I yeah, you I did. Have, I think I've adapted a little bit since then. Okay. Uh, now, in in rehearsals and stuff like that, um, for for Johnny, I, I I don't, you know, I haven't been there unfortunately, and um, the the movements for for, for Johnny, the, the karate and all that stuff, uh, is a lot of that coming from Keone and Mari? Like, the, what, what did um, uh, if, if any, Sakura? Well, what? Uh, does she have to teach you anything for Johnny as a Cobra Kai? Yeah, well, she worked with Sakura was wonderful and worked with all of us and was very, very helpful in terms of like the form, the forms, everything. I've all, I also like took a lot of Taekwondo before I did this. That's right. They, they sent you to someone, right? Sent me to someone. Yeah, not not for too much time because the, the time, you know, the time was a little crunched. But um, yeah, they sent me to someone um, in the east side in the city and yeah, it was, so I so I've had a little a lot of people in my corner kind of helping me out, but um, what was helpful about doing this show, it's intimidating because you got to be Johnny Lawrence, right? Like you got to be the All Valley Champ, um, and uh, what's what's helpful is that because it's musicalized, it can kind of be a little hybrid of traditional martial arts and um, dance too. It's all kind of choreographed, but um, the way Keone and Mari do it is like so badass like you, you you kind of live in both worlds and you're not like you don't have to be a purist as a dancer or a martial artist it just kind of like combines um and of course they worked with sakura and um and Keone and mari worked with what i could do and you know not with what i couldn't do to make it um 
to make it as clean as possible. So yeah, they they utilize you to your strengths and not be like, well, you need to do this because this is what we think looks looks good, right? right. So I yeah, that's, that's probably just a smart decision on all their parts. So of course, some of these dancers who can do some crazy kicks and flips, um, you utilize it in the show. Um, so everyone's strengths are definitely emphasized. Uh, they do that well. Yeah. So you, you recently um, uh, mentioned Alan H. Green has become your buddy. Can you tell me about the uh, you guys' first encounter? <laughs> um, yes, I I found out that I was doing that that Alan was playing um, Crease. Crease. Of course, he's like you know he's 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 a Broadway dude, so it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know you you talk to him. Um, yes. Uh, like anyone who anyone who talks to Alan H. Green is, is is very lucky. He's got the best energy. But I'll be honest, the first time we met, he was like, he you know, he kind of looked at me up and down. And he's like, OK, yeah, you're Johnny Lawrence. This will do. He's like, but like, I need you to be I need you to be a little scared of me. I can tell right now you're a little scared. of <laughs> You're a little scared of me. And that's going to work out well for us. Um, I mean, I had never met the guy before. Right. Like I'm a newbie in the city. This whole thing. Alan H. Green is just like. Um, he's just so funny. Like I can't even, he, you know, and he's always kind of screwing with me in the dressing room too. Um, but I don't know why. Yeah. And, and from that moment on, we, like we got lunch, we, we started hanging out and um, we're kind of inseparable now I would like to think, but he was, he was like, he kind of scared me the first <laughs> moment I met him and he's always been a cool guy. Like he's always been um, straight up with me about how, you know, everything works and, yeah, I, I, I didn't expect to to be as good of friends with him as we are. But now we're kind of like a in a, and it helps the the work on stage as well. You know, we're 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 buddies, but but <laughs> there's a little element of fear there as well. I am scared of him. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, that, that's that's great. Right. Because on stage, uh, Chris is Johnny's mentor and it sounds like he's uh, Alan's become that for you as well. And, oh, and, yeah. and fr yeah, friends off stage. And that's that's very much uh, kind of mirrors like, you know, Billy and Marty's relationship too. Uh, you know, it, uh, decades later, they are still very good friends. And, you know, obviously they're still working on Cobra Kai together. But, you know, even before Cobra Kai, they were you know, going to weddings together and uh, appearing I mean. at cons together and stuff. Yeah. So that, that's really awesome. And I can yeah. see your guys' relationship continuing, especially if you guys are staying in the scene together too, like, like the, the theater scene. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Even you saying that right now, I'm like, wow, it is crazy that like it, it, he is kind of like become sort of a mentor, you know, and like it is, so it makes the work pretty, pretty easy. But of course, I, I also love that he, you know, respects me as an actor and we can, you know, collaborate and he's not you know he's never passionizing or anything so yeah it's yeah. great he's he doesn't have you yeah i couldn't ask for a better crease <laughs> to work yeah. with so we're yeah. very I, I, I was very fortunate to uh, for, for him to say yes to be one of the first ones to to share his stories and stuff so i i, I had a great time doing a deep dive into learning about alan before speaking with him yeah. um yeah Let's see. There was something else I was going to mention. Well, let, let me jump to this before. Uh, maybe the other thing will will come up again. Uh, what, what is this old man character that you do that uh, makes Jetta laugh? Did she say that? You, she might have brought it up. Yeah. The, it's funny because wherever I go and wherever friend friend group I am, it's like they they always think it's a character. I think it might just be who I am. Okay. But you're gonna have to ask you're gonna have to ask one of the other cast members to describe it as well because I don't know if I can be objective. Oh, okay. Well I think she's I think she's probably referring to whenever we're just like a little overwhelmed in rehearsal or whatever. Just kind of walk around and just be like, okay, wait, I'm doing the crossword today. Uh wait, what is a 16 letter word for butt shop? And I don't know why it it I mean Jed is the real comedian genius. But I can make Jetta laugh with that. Just like this, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's just this <laughs> old man character who's like looking around, like doing the wordle for the day. Just that. It's so stupid. Um, I'm glad she loves it. But then the the gag is, is like people call me just kind of an old man anyway. Like I'll just kind of be in rehearsal like, oh, wow, what time is it? Is it lunchtime already? You know, just kind of maybe I'm a 60 year old man inside a, you know, 24 year old. You have an old soul. You know? Yeah, I guess I guess so. Yeah, you know, I I, I think it's uh, 
all, all that time, you know, with your dad and, and, and the music, you know, maybe there's something to that, you know, it kind of gives you like, you know, just this, this otherworldly old experience, you know, so, so maybe you feel a bit older than some of the other cast. I don't know. I think I've always been um, even, I, I mean, I'm thinking like early high school, all my friends were always older. I think, I think I've always kind of, I won't say mature, but I've just kind of always, you know, vibed with, with older crowds. I don't know why. And I love mountain biking and a good hike. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe an old soul. Um, and then I got to strip that off when we, when we do the, the high school stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, that, that's cool that you have like, you know, that thing that, that, that you do, you know, like, um, uh, you know, as you were describing it, I was kind of going away from what I thought it was like, oh, maybe it's like some sort of defense mechanism for something, you know, but I, I don't think it's that, you know, it's just kind of like, it, it's just a thing you do to kind of like fill in a, like a, a certain void, you know, like, a, yeah. you, you know, it's just some quietness it, instead of like some quietness, let me just do this thing, you know, so so that way it, it's an energy thing. I, I don't know, maybe like your performance artistic side, you know, it's just coming out just think- for, for whatever reason. And for whatever reason, that's the bit that makes all my colleagues like laugh or, you know, choke in their food. So that's, that's what now, now that you've reminded me, I'm going to do that all day. We have two shows today. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get some chuckles out of them as well. There you go. Maybe, maybe have somebody film, uh, you know, uh, off to okay. the side, just, just to see the reactions, you know, a little, yeah. little, a little prank, you know, just here, there, just to see how, how it works on some people. Right. So um, at this point, I have not yet spoken with John Cardoza, uh, you know, so on stage, you guys are rivals. Um, are you guys instructed or directed at all to, you know, kind of like stay apart or, you know, because everyone seems pretty damn tight, you know, on set yeah. or, or on on stage. So the, you hear tricks like that, right, in, in, in cinema where like, well, you guys are rivals, so we want you guys to stay away from each other in different trailers and whatnot. Can you talk about your working relationship with John? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably in some ways an, an antiquated um, uh, way, way to work. I've definitely heard that from some people, especially with such an iconic relationship as them. They're like, you know, stay apart. That's not really how I like to work. I actually have a better time um, uh, vibing with, with John and, you know, so we're doing a fight call every day because we're punching and kicking each other all the time. Um, I, I kind of enjoy kind of just like checking in with him and, and vibing. Um, uh, yeah, but, and then we do, we do, you know, keep our, keep our work separately, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I enjoy, and he's such a nice guy. Um, everyone on this show is so, so kind, but, um, yeah, I think I think it's honestly a little bit better to just like, you know, lock in and uh, and be in the same space because you don't want to end up like, you know, slipping a punch on accident because um, then you got a real problem. It's 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 better when we can be when we can you know, have lunch or be friends and uh, and and then really play on stage. And it's always different, you know, um, really get to like it, it's it's pretty crazy to <laughs> to be, you know, such good buddies and then be so terrible to each other on stage um but i I, in my opinion and as an actor that's that's what works for me is 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 being close and and locking in and then getting to have a lot of fun with how how tumultuous our relationship can be on stage yeah again kind of mirrors ralph and billy's uh you know relationship as well you yeah. know, so that that's that's really cool. So, um, you know, I want to give a shout out to to Drew, the Cobra Kai kid. I, I learned a little something from a, a post of his recently that you improvised quiet into the script. So I, before before you yeah, talk yeah. about that, are you guys given kind of some range here to kind of improvise some parts uh, where you guys see fit? A little bit, yeah. The 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 creative team is is wonderful about. Um, uh, allowing actor input because you're the one on stage, right? So you gotta you you can kind of see things from a different angle. I will say now that I'm now that I'm realizing it, I think it was um, maybe a, a castmate, a Cedro, who who brought up like I think the line used to be "shut your mouth" or something like that. And Cedro's like, "Why don't you say quiet?" That's the that's the iconic line. So then I think I just did it one day, and then the next day we got we got new script pages every day, and then the next day I just see that's that's in the in the script and then I think they maybe took it out again um and I was like 
you got to keep this line in. Like the Cobra Kai fanatics are going to go crazy for this. And they do. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a group effort. You got a lot of, you know, the ensemble men, everyone, they know the show. Um, and you can't, you can't miss out on an opportunity like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, a sneak preview. That line is in the show. As well. Yeah. That is like amazing. <laughs> you know, when, when, yeah, Drew posted that, I go, because I, I feel like Drew Gasparini posted something and I saw somebody comment quiet in all caps and I'm like, oh, they're a Cobra Kai fan, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I feel like, you know, in hindsight, maybe that was like a reference to like that being worked into, you know, to the musical. And I think that's great because now now we have like something that's kind of canon, like, OK, this is where where it kind of started. We, we did find every opportunity um, without being, you know, over over ser- over serving it uh, to to implement you know, the canon in there. That's that's part of the fun, right? Like you want to see Johnny do this at a certain point because, it's, and that's another thing I loved about the series is like, I mean, can you talk about a better, ba- you know, backstory research than than that show? You can't, yeah. right? Like got right. all the kids in there. Um, yeah, and that's, so uh, that's why I think people might be surprised by is like, you got Robert Kamen on, on the show, you got input from all these people and, and all the actors love the show as well, so. It's important to us to 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 throw in as much as we can of the real you know characters because we we're not you know I'm not I'm not Billy he's not Ralph but you wanna you wanna be in the world um, that's right. the that's the fun of it yeah I think you guys are definitely you know like Alan mentioned integrity in in his uh, interview and we continue to see it with all the things that are starting to kind of slowly leak out in, into our real world. And everything just looks amazing, and you guys are definitely honoring the characters and and, and all that. Um, yeah, as we get ready to wrap up, you know, let's kind of uh, talk about like the you know your guys's red carpet and stuff. Like, I saw a picture of Mark Summers. You know, I grew up on some Double Dare. Like, you know, I have a son that's almost twenty two, which is wild to say. You know, because you just yeah. mentioned you're twenty four. But uh, did were there any other people in attendance on that opening night that you got to meet that that you're like oh wow this is that person like Martin Cove was there that night I uh, hated Schlossberg he he walked out on the I mean first of all like it was like a red carpet like it's so weird like if you've never done it before you just kind of mosey around and you know take interviews here and there um, and then yeah and then Martin Cove uh, came out of nowhere <laughs> he was just chilling talking to Alan it's 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 we yeah it's it's a bit weird to see someone you know so well from from tv you know in 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 the company um i'd say that but then like there were so many like you know cool press people people who know the show the vip people who are excited to see how how the the property transitions to the stage um and you can't ask for a better energy and it felt you know it felt cool it felt famous right it was like red, like red carpet all this all this cool stuff um and like i said the energy that night was the best because it's it's all people who love the show, love musical theater, and want to see the show succeed and and um, and whose expectations I, I think were blown away. So yeah. I mean it, it sounds like you had a, a pretty incredible journey. And you know, I, I am definitely here to, you know, watch you continue that journey as well. Uh, for you know, maybe the the younger folks that are, are are tuning in that is listening to your story because this is something they want to do. Do you have any advice? Because you know, you you went to school, you you've lived abroad in a few different states. It sounds like. Um, what tips do you have for people that are looking to get into the industry? Uh, you know, at some point. Yeah, I love that um, because I think that's definitely what I could have used. You know, when I was younger as well, I would say keep doing. Uh, um, exploring things you didn't think you could do. For me, it was like dance. I, you know, I can't say enough how, how, like I said, too left footed I was um, and, and how making, wanting to succeed and learn how to dance and make that a thing I could do in my arsenal um, or to the best of my ability with what, with what I had um, just like taught me about like perseverance and like taking years and, you know, it might as well be Taekwondo, it might as well be martial arts, I, you know, um, and because I I worked so hard on that and 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 my other skills and refined it even when, you know you're still working as a as a waiter um, as I was or or doing whatever, um, it led to you know it doesn't seem like it's gonna lead anywhere specific but the the thing is you never know where it's gonna lead it landed me with Keone and Mari and I don't know what I'm doing doing their choreography but that's a skill I can at least um, 
keep up with. Um, and it's because of that, just trying new things and really working hard at something I was really bad at um, has changed my life because that's kind of where I ended up here. And I'd say the only other thing maybe um, is just, you know, um, being authentic. It's so hard to do if you're an actor in theater, you want to be like this person or that person. Um, there's a trope where as a guy, you got to sing really, really high. Um, and though that's true, sometimes it was never something I could do especially well. Um, and over time I was like, man, I don't know what, how I'm going to make a living out of this. And I, you know, and I found this part and it's, it's written, you know, right in my wheelhouse and it's, you know, so, so not letting limitations uh, hold me back, but rather embracing what I can do well, knowing that I, that I could do it. Um, and then, you know, you, it might take a, you know, a couple of weeks, it might take a couple of years, but you'll end up where, uh, where you're meant to be. And I'm, yeah, and I feel that here, I feel like I can do this, this job well. And, um, and my skills lend it, uh, lend myself to the, to the part. And um, it's just such a, yeah. And yeah, so that, that's what I would say. And yeah, follow your dreams, man. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky to be here and I'm, I'm so happy it's, it's the route I took. Yeah, no, no, no regrets, man. Yeah, so that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm really happy for you, truly am. Um, and uh, where can people follow you if they want to, you know, continue uh, or follow you on your, on your journey as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm on Instagram at Jake Bentley Young. I got the full name thing. Jake Young was taken. That's my full name. Uh, at Jake Bentley Young. Yeah, and um, yeah, I got a you know website, jakebentleyyoung.com. Check it out. Uh, and you know, I got some some things online. Hopefully, we'll be uh, doing more as the as the weeks and the months go by. Um, but that's that's where I'd start. Check me out there. <laughs>